Hey y'all, I pray that each and every last one of you are doing amazingly great. Today this message is literally for missionaries, all ministers, evangelists, teachers, apostles, bishops, pastors, wherever you call yourself. If you are called by God, this is for us. The Lord was really dealing with me on yesterday and more so this morning. He was dealing with me concerning the needs of the people. The Lord spoke to me and he said, when we come to him for the needs of the people, we got to stop being the one that's talking and we got to listen because the people are really needing to hear a word from God because that's was going to change our lives. That's just, that's going to change their lives. And so, you know, I know today is a very special, a very important day because today is Resurrection Sunday. And um, as the Lord was beginning to deal with me concerning Resurrection Sunday, He began to deal with me on the fact that there are so many people who are gathering their children together. They're all giving them Easter speeches. A lot of them are dressing up wearing their fancy hats and their nice suits. Some of them are wearing their nice slacks. Some of them are wearing their beautiful blouses. Some of them are putting beautiful lace socks on the children, but still don't understand what resurrection is all about. When you actually know your parents, you would know your parents' name. You would know their parents' name. You would know all their children' name. You would know their birth date. You would know some of the jobs, or more so all the jobs that they have worked. You would know all the personal things about them. And he's saying that that's the same way when it comes to knowing who he is. You should know who Jesus is. You should know the way that he talks. You should even be able to identify him the way that Adam and Eve was, how he was walking in the cool of the day, in the garden. You should know his feelings. You should know his emotions. Because that's what it's like to know a person. So you should know why he was resurrected from the dead. You should know why he was resurrected resurrected from the grave these are the things that the Lord wants to deal with us about today a lot of us because of tradition and because we were growing up there are so many of us as little girls we can remember the hot comb on the stove where we from we call it straighten comb we can remember the smell of it as it's heating up to be put on our hair. We can even identify the smell of the burnt, the burnt odor when it hits our hair. And when it hits the, the little tissue or napkin that our mother is taking to cool down the straighten comb, we can, we can identify the smell of it. A lot of the young men can remember going to New Yorkers or Blue Steens to go pick out their suits. A lot of them can remember going to the mall and pick out their clothes. But what is Resurrection Sunday really about? Why did Jesus have to go to the garden of Gethsemane to pray that God let this cup pass over him? Why did the Bible describe the sweat and the blood that came from Jesus as he was praying. Why was he buffeted? Why was the purple robe, the purple scarlet robe placed on him for mockery? Why was there engravement that was put on the tree that he was hanged on? Some of us, we call it a cross because we think that it's two sticks put together looking like a T-sheet. 
but he was hanged on a cross. He was hanged on a tree. Why did he become a curse for us? Some of our ears are, are rising right now like dogs, dog's ears. What? He did what? If we go into the word, we will read it that he became a curse for us. In the word of God, it teaches us that curses is the man that hangs on a tree. Why did he go to the grave? To, why did he die? Why was he up there on that cross with the two criminals that was on the side of him? Why did he go into the tomb after dying? Why was there frankincense and myrrh? Why was it all of these things? What is the resurrection about? Well, that's what he wants to deal with us about today. Resurrection happened. Jesus died and he rose from the grave. He came out of the grave on the third day just for you and I for the remissions of our sins for the cancellation of our sins is why he did it he did it because he loved us he did it because he was trying to bring us back to himself and so therefore the Lord wants us to understand that just because it's resurrection Sunday he don't want you to give the people a, another resurrection speech he wants you to give them what they need. And in order to give them what they need, you really got to pray to God. Lord, give me the needs of my neighbor. A lot of us are praying to God about things for ourselves. Well, I went to church and I was broken and I was fixed. So I'm getting, it's time to go now. It's time to go. But that's not obeying the commandments, the commands of the Lord. One of the scriptures that he has given us, and he repeated it, the greatest of them all. One of them is to love the Lord your God and our God with all our might, with all our body, with all our mind, with all our soul. And the next one is to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We got to stop wanting to come into the house of the Lord to get what we need, but don't care what our neighbor gets. Because that's not loving our neighbor like we love ourselves. But God, I know I came to you today for this, but my neighbor is in a need for that. Could you fulfill my neighbor's need? And he will take care of yours just because you asked for them. The Bible says it's better to give than to receive it's not about what we can receive from God but it's about what we can give because he gave his life for us why can't we give ours for him he says deny self pick up the cross and follow him and so today I'm being obedient to the voice of the Lord I said God then what is it that you want me to speak to the people about. He said, I want you to talk to them about two passages in the scripture. One passage is coming from Matthew chapter 6, verses 33. And the next passage is coming from Matthew 7, 7 through 8. When you go to Matthew 6 and 33, it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. So you seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness and everything else will be added to you. And then Matthew 7 verses 7 and 8, it tells us, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be be open unto you. Whosoever asketh, he will find it. Whosoever seeketh is here for you. And so, he wants me to explain 
that passage of scripture for you. That when you seek first the kingdom of God, a lot of us, we come out here and we begin to teach the people that when we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, or if we seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, everything will be added. But you don't even know. The Lord says a lot of them don't even know who's preaching this, what that scripture actually means. He said, but if you will take two of those verses and put them together, seek and you shall find. And then you will take Matthew 6 and 33, seek first the kingdom of God. He said, well, when you seek in seven, you will what? Find it. And so when you're seeking the kingdom, he's saying, find the kingdom. And then everything else that you are asking him will be added to you. Why? Because you found the kingdom. And therefore, what you need, healing, deliverance, salvation, what do you need? A peace of mind? Because you found the kingdom, you found healing. Because why? It follows them that believe. If you can just believe what the word of God says today, and you will follow him, then everything else you need will follow you too. Everything else you need is going to follow you. And so God said, there are so many of you that are needing to know why we celebrate resurrection. He said, if you ask, you shall find. And so if you seek, you shall find. If you ask, it shall be given to you. He said, so he's going to give you this word today. He died for the cancellation of your sins. Because Adam and Eve was not the only one that sinned in this world. We were too. We were sinners too. And we sinned too. And he came to save us from our self. And so therefore he says, I need you to deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Just like he had to carry his, pick your cross up and follow him. He said, don't think about it being a burden. Because he says, when you take the yoke upon yourself and you learn of him, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So those of you that are working in the vineyard, you're working out here in the field, you're preaching the word, you're teaching the word, you're praying all night, you're fasting all the time, and you're tired. He said, don't give up. He said, don't faint. Because if you wait on him, and you don't give up, and you don't faint, in due season, you shall reap. You shall reap. So he says, instead of giving up, all of you workers, all of you laborers, he said, come to him. All of you that are heavy laden with burden, come to him and he will give you rest. He said, I need for you to go out here now. Every last one of you that's under the sound of his voice. He said, he needs for us to go out into the street to compel the people to come in. What does that mean? What does that mean? A lot of us are not seeing results when we go out into the street. <laughs> it's because we don't know what compel means. He said, I need you to urge the people. I need you to tell them. I need for you to tell them, get in the house now. It's an urgency. Get in the house. There is a storm coming. Get in the house. There is hurricanes that's coming. Get in the house. There's tornadoes that is coming. Get in the house. Don't wait for perilous times to come because we're already living in it. Get in the house. Because if you don't get in the house now, when the reapers come you're going to be destroyed 
They're going to bind your feet. And they're going to throw you into the pit of hell. That was never ever intended for people. But for the devil and the devil's angels. He says, get in the house. When you go out there, you tell the blind man, get in the house. It's an urgency. You got to get in here now. If you don't get in the house now, you're going to die. He said, a lot of them are going to ask, how can I escape death? He said, and that's when you tell them. The children of Israel, they were instructed to kill a lamb. To take the blood of the lamb. And they were to put it on the doorposts of their homes. After taking it with the hyssop plant. Hyssop. David says, cleanse me God with your hyssop so I can be clean. The hyssop represents cleansing. And so he says, when you take his blood, because he was the lamb that was slain on you, slain for you. He said, you take his blood, and that's how you're going to escape death. He said, his children never dies, they sleep. And so we are living this life, you guys, to live it again. He wants me to come out here to teach and talk to the rich men. A lot of us out here, we're really wealthy. And some of us are trying to figure out well, how can you guys be wealthy in such a time as this? It's like we are still in a pandemic. Well, when it comes to God's children, for those of us that say we are God's children, we don't feel that impact. When there's a famine that comes to the land, we don't feel it. We don't feel droughts. We don't feel those. And so, a lot of us are wealthy, but a lot of us are serving wealth. And he said, you cannot serve two masters. You're going to either hate one or love the other. He said, for the love of money, is the root of all evil. There was a rich man that appeared to Jesus. And I want you guys to look at your risk and say it is about time to go. But there was a, a rich man that appeared to Jesus. And he wanted to know what shall he do to be saved. And the Lord told him. Because the Lord saw his heart. The Lord knew, he knew his thoughts. He said, sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor. Because this rich man had a love for the earthly things. I want y'all to, I want y'all to, to catch this. He had a love for the earthly things. He missed the heavenly things. Because he chose wealth and possession over salvation. So that's what God is saying today. Find the kingdom and everything you need will be there. He said it's just like looking for your keys in a room. A lot of us were looking for keys in a room. Because we know we never left that room. So it was nowhere else to look. But some of us, we get to this place where we know good and well we never left that room. And that's where the key was. We begin to go outside of the room. Okay, y'all don't hear me up in here. We end up going outside the room into the living room, into the kitchen. Into areas where the keys never was. And that's why we can never find it. And so if we go back into the room... Come on, somebody. We're talking about going back to the house. And we go back into the house. Here it is. Is where we're going to find what we lost. The keys. 
When you find the keys, you are excited and you're like, no, I gotta take more better care of this key. And I gotta put this key in a safe place, why? Because you know that key is going to get you inside the house. It's gonna be able to open the door and lock the doors. It's gonna be able to get you in the vehicle to be able to drive from A to Z. But if you lose your keys, I want y'all to catch this in the room of the spirit. If you lose your keys, you have no binding and loosing power. Because he has given the keys to bind whatever we bind on the earth so they can be bound in heaven. He's granted us these keys so whatever we loose here on the earth may be loose there in heaven. Don't lose your binding and your loosing power. So he's saying, if you just look around right where you are, just like you knew the keys was in that room, he said, know that he is right here in the house. He's right here in the house. I want to tell you that the blessings of the Lord make a rich and add no sorrow in my closing. God said it's going to be just like you going to the car lot. It's going to feel like you're in a candy store. You see all these candy and there's things that you can choose from. There's things you can choose from. So he says, when you see <laughs> these blessings, it's going to be just like you're going to a car lot. You can pick and choose whichever one you want. Because they all belong to you. Just choose. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Let's keep it in mind. We got to pray for the needs. And we need the word. Amen.